Uh, I'm Jamie Henderson. I'm a uh, neurosurgeon at Stanford University, and my two plenary talks at the INS this year are on uh, brain-computer interfaces, some of the clinical challenges that we face, and optogenetics, similarly on some of the clinical challenges that we face. So both of these technologies are relatively early stage, uh, which means that they're uh, in the laboratory, that they've come from laboratory uh, investigations, and we're trying to develop them into something that could be of help for people with disabilities. Uh, in the realm of brain-computer interfaces, I think we're a bit further along. So at this point, uh, we have a clinical trial that's ongoing of brain-computer interfacing, uh, and we're showing some pretty good successes there. We're able to uh, control computer cursors. We're able to um, uh, allow people to type at speeds up to eight words per minute using brain signals. Um, we're uh, other parts of our group, which is the BrainGate Consortium, of which I'm a part, uh, are showing some very nice results, being able to move uh, paralyzed limbs using uh, brain signals and functional electrical stimulation systems. So despite all of these advances, there's still a lot of challenges that need to be met. Uh, the systems are still wired. They need to become wireless. Uh, they need to be made smaller. They need to be made fully implantable. Um, we still have a lot of work to do in terms of our decoding uh, to be able to do a better job of uh, reading neural signals and interpreting them to be able to uh, drive end effectors in the outside world like computer systems or, or functional electrical stimulation or, or robots. Uh, and so I think we're making good progress towards those goals. I think there's a roadmap for that with uh, fully implantable wireless devices, more advanced decoders, um, uh, and uh, uh, continued performance improvements and uh, continued performance improvements in the, in the systems that we use. In the realm of optogenetics, on the other hand, we're much farther from clinical adoption. So these are systems that have been used uh, in research, in research animals, but have still not been deployed in people. There's a whole host of challenges that we have to overcome. Everything from the uh, uh, everything from the uh, So everything from the gene therapy vectors to uh, how light diffuses through tissue to the different wavelengths that we use uh, to the fact that we're now implanting devices in the body that have never been implanted like optical fibers or light emitting diodes or lasers. Uh, so the power requirements may be very large. The uh, expression of the genes may uh, fade over time and uh, we may need to choose different wavelengths of light and different options to use. So I would say both of these areas face considerable challenges. Both of these areas have considerable promise. Uh, but in the end, I think um, uh, we're going to see some very interesting stuff uh, coming down the pike in both of these uh, really interesting areas of research.